Eric B. Enemy with some very interesting comments on Sam Howell's development and how it relates to wins and losses. We've got your injury updates. We've got a signing that is a little bit interesting. All that and more in your Daily Commanders update for 14 December. Let's go. <music> Greetings and salutations and welcome to your Daily Commanders update here on Ref the District. I am the Stoner. We are a proud member of the Believe Network. Thank you all for checking in to see what's happening in Commander land. A whole lot going on today, even though it's just another day towards the end of the season. Things are always happening in Washington. Just trust me on that. But again, appreciate you all checking in. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening on an audio platform, make sure you leave a rating and review. Tell us how we're doing. Give us feedback. Let us know if we're missing out on things or uh, or you want to hear some different things. We're here for you. Cool things to get to today. We're going to talk a little bit about injury updates from practice today. They did practice out in Ashburn. Um, of course, uh, we want to. There's a cool stat I want to bring up about next gen stats. It's not a good stat. It's a crazy stat, but we got to share that a little bit. We're going to talk about the signing of Caillou Blue Kelly. Who is he? What does he mean for the future of this organization? Is he a part of the future? But let's start with this here. Um, Let's start with a little bit about uh, what Eric Bieniemy talked about today in his press conference. So I'm going to bring this up, and you can see uh, what he said. But Eric Bieniemy on Sam Howell. I like what he has done. He's growing. We're excited by his development. But ultimately, in this league, you're judged by wins and losses. Let's break that down. Let's break that down. Let's start with the first half. I like what he has done. He's growing. We're excited by his development. So what he's basically saying is kind of what we've all seen with Sam Howell on his development. We like what we've seen with his development, especially from where he was last year when he couldn't even sniff the practice field. He couldn't even get reps in practice. You remember right before week 18, and I think he talked about that today on a podcast Sam did, when he was talking to RG3 and RG3 asked him about the whole practice last year. He never got any practice snaps, never got any sort of preparation snaps before week 18. And he still went out there and balled and looked pretty good, but his development from the time when he came into camp where his footwork was terrible, his accuracy was bad, all of that to where he is now is, is definitely a huge improvement. I'm not going to sit here and say that he's definitely the guy or he's definitely not the guy, but the improvement is noticeable. You can't deny the improvement. Whether or not Washington decides they're going to draft a quarterback is still to be determined, but the improvement is there. And so I like what EB says about that. However, let's go back to the second half of that quote. But ultimately in this league, You're judged by wins and losses. And I can't kind of, I can't help but think about the irony of what he's saying. Maybe irony is not even the right word. You're judged by wins and losses. Look in the mirror, Eric Bianami. You're being judged by wins and losses as well. Sam Howell is going to be on this team next year, whether it's as a starter or fighting for a starter or automatically to the bench if they draft uh, a certain quarterback like a Caleb Williams, for example. Eric Bieniemy is not. And he's not because of wins and losses. And he's saying this about Sam Howell. You're ultimately judged by wins and losses. When, in fact, he's going to get more judged. He's going to get more scrutinized because of the wins and losses of the team. He's going to be out of a job. Because of that, because he couldn't ultimately lead this offense to better production, which means more wins. We all know the defense was the biggest problem, but the offense has not been glowing. That's for sure. So I just finally, I kind of found that uh, a little bit curious uh, as well. So I bet, I'm betting at least, I'm betting that Eric Bieniemy will not be here next year. I'm also probably betting that Sam Howell will be the, quarterback that this team builds around but we've still got four weeks to check that out an entire offseason a whole new regime but if you're a better 
and you want to kind of bet on some futures, go to Bet Online. All the major sports are in action this week with college football playoffs ready to kick off in about 10 days. Bet Online is your number one destination for all your sports wagering info, including news for pro football, NBA, upcoming fights, NHL games this season. Head to the website today to get into the action and see all the updated odds for the week. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so let's get to the next topic at hand. And that particular topic is going to be about Caillou Blue Kelly. The Rams and Texans put in claims for Kai, Caillou Blue Kelly. He's a cornerback who was awarded to the Commanders. The Commanders, of course, between the three teams at least, have the worst record, so therefore they're going to get the claim. And so he was awarded to the Commanders. This is the second time in the past few weeks the Rams tried to claim him, Kelly. They tried to claim him. Rams twice have tried to get him, only to have a team with a higher priority get him. Kelly's story is really kind of interesting. He is a he is a um, a guy with some um, NFL blood, right? He's the son of an NFL player. He's a track star. He was drafted in the fifth round this year. Listen to his journey so far to where he is today. He was drafted by the Ravens in the fifth round. 157 overall. Now, after that, in training camp, at the end of training camp, the Ravens cut him, right? At the end of the training camp. The next day, the Seahawks claimed him off of waivers. So he didn't even clear waivers. And you you remember the numbers of when guys get cut by teams in at the end of training camp, how many actually get claimed? It's like 2%. So the Seahawks saw something in him to be to use a waiver claim on him. So the Seahawks picked him up. And he played in five games with them. Then in November, November 11th, Seahawks cut him. Four days later, he found another home with the Packers. Okay. So then he's on the Packers, and that's where uh, the Rams put in a claim for him, but the Packers got him instead. Kelly played one game with the Packers. That was on Thanksgiving Day, uh, and he actually played on defense, whereas in Seattle he was only on special teams. In Green Bay he actually played on defense, and the Packers let him go. And so now he was claimed on waivers again. It's very, very rare. I don't even know if you're allowed to use very before uh, rare because rare already means very, not often. Uh, But it's very rare for somebody to be claimed three times or twice in a season. And that's happened with this guy. So there's something there. He's He's a track guy. He's got ridiculous speed. And so I think people see that and they want to develop that. And that's why he's being claimed instead of just going through the waiver process and then all of a sudden anybody can pick him up or he can go anywhere he wants. So teams see something in him. Baltimore saw something in him when they drafted him. Fifth round, you know, that's kind of a um, you know, a reach or or just trying to get somebody. Hey, remember Sam Howell's drafted in the fifth round. Then he was claimed on waivers after he was cut in training camp. Then he was cut again. Then he was claimed on waivers again. They see something in him. I don't know a whole lot about him. He's from Stanford, Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if there is a future with uh, Caillou Blue Kelly in this commander's organization. I kind of think about it, though, is remember the guy from the Vikings that they picked up at the end of training camp? He was like a, a third rounder or a second rounder. Can't remember his name. You guys are going to have to rem- remind me of his name. He was a corner. His name keeps coming to the tip of my tongue, and then I lose it. Um, but they claimed him, and we all thought, oh, maybe this guy can play. And then like a week later, they cut him. So there's something something going on there as well. Uh, but it kind of reminds me of that, though. Is this guy really – he's shown enough potential but not enough potential to stick to a team? And when they claimed him and gave him the roster spot, that's when they cut Danny Johnson. And Danny Johnson is no 
all pro sort of corner, but he's been solid. And then all of a sudden you let him go. That was just a little bit curious. But anyway, that's the your information on uh, Kelly. Uh, then here's this next gen stat that I want to talk to you about, which is crazy. Let me bring this next gen stat up. According to next gen stats, the commanders have allowed 19 touchdowns on vertical routes this season. That's eight more than any other team. That is stunning for a franchise that entered the season with reasonable hopes of fielding a top half defense with the potential to be a top 10 group. 19 touchdowns on vertical routes. Basically, that's saying, you go and I'll throw you the pat. I'll, th- I'll throw the long pass. It doesn't have necessarily have to be long, but it's just a vertical. It's just a go. It's just go straight. And I'm going to throw it to you and you're going to get touched. 19 of them in 13 games. That's an average of one, you know, one and a half a game. That's insane. We're, that's eight more than anybody else. The next most team has 11, which is basically an average of one per game. That's how bad this defense is, which is, as that stat said, is stunning. When you look at last year's defense, which was basically a top 10 defense, and the only changes, the only changes were losing Bobby McCain and losing Cole Holcomb. And you replaced them basically with Forbes and uh, Cody Barton. That's your only changes from that defense. That's crazy to me. It's it's insane how bad this defense has gotten. And it's not like they're just kind of a bad defense. They are the worst defense in the NFL. Remember Denver who gave up 70 points in one game? They have a better defense. Their last five weeks, they're averaging like giving up like 13 points a game. Crazy how far this uh, defense has fallen. Uh, And then I wanted to give you some injury updates. And the only injury update as of recording time was uh, Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson Jr., who is obviously an important part of this offense. He was on the side field today, so he did not practice again today which is not great. Listen, he's a stud, but he is um, he is not practicing today, which doesn't look good for Sunday against the Rams, but let's all just kind of hope because he is an, obviously an important part of uh, the commander's offense, which hasn't been great, but at least uh, you want your best players in there when you have the chance. So that's your uh, injury updates. I don't have any other injury updates on everybody else uh, The term, in terms of like Sadiq Charles, Curtis Hodges, uh, James Smith Williams, who um, didn't practice uh, yesterday as well. Who are some other guys that were banged up? I was trying to find my list from yesterday, but um, unfortunately, we don't have any of those updates except for the Brian Robinson update. Make sure you check us out. We've got a great shows coming up all weekend long. Tomorrow, again on Friday, is your daily commanders update. Saturday, we've got your game preview. We've got Eric Bickle, EB from the Junkies, who's going to join us for that game preview. Sunday, join us for the live stream. It is so awesome. You have to be there for that. It's fun to watch the game, hang out. It's like hanging out with your boys and watching the game live and reacting to it and screaming and jumping and punching things and all that craziness. That's Sunday starting at about 3.45 p.m. Eastern because it is an afternoon late game out in L.A. Have an instant reaction right after that. And then, of course, on Monday we'll have your day after reckoning, and then we'll start the week getting ready for the Jets. Uh, next week because you got the Jets on Christmas Eve. Is Aaron Rodgers playing? You're going to want to find out, so tune in. Appreciate everybody who has checked in on us today. And don't forget, this has been a presentation of Bet Online. We appreciate appreciate everybody. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. And if you're listening on audio, make sure you give us a rating and review. And until next time, be a fan.